bottom dollars. Chapter 5. My mother didn't think I could do it. A green lawn in front of the Capitol building in Olympia, Washington. Minimum wage, 11 per hour. Hugh Bertolin walks down the street. I hear shots from Berlin. I used to work at Morningside Shelter Workshop. I was making less than minimum wage. And how long did you work at the shelter workshop? About 15, um, yeah, about 15 years. A sign reading, Morningside, everybody works, everybody wins. My name is Jim Larson, and I'm the CEO of Morningside. Morningside has always been a very successful program and a very innovative program. But I think while we say we focus on the individual early on in our, our history, or our history through shelter and employment, I'm not sure if that's true. A professor at the University of Oregon brought up his students and they did a survey of our, all of our students in children employment. So 80% of the people uh, wanted to work in the community and we had about 20% of the people indicated that maybe staying there or something else would, would have been better for them. First you're kind of shocked saying, 80%? That's a lot. I'm sure more people would want to be here. But that's the only option they had. And I think that's the other thing with choice. So if you only have one choice, what are your options? What are your exposure to work? You don't have any exposure to work. So it seems to me that uh, when you have that exposure and that choice, then, then there's other options than going to a shelter workshop. Hugh waits to cross the street. Disability rights, Washington sign. My name is Susan Cass, and I'm a staff attorney at Disability Rights Washington. The whole concept of a shelter workshop was based on, you know, a charitable notion and a notion of, of giving people opportunities that didn't otherwise exist. And so it, it has roots that, that run deep and are several, have been around for several decades. The, the call to end subminimum wage and to end the practice of, of shelter, um, sheltered work um, is, is a call that almost universally is to, to transition and to phase out this um, practice. Well, 2004 is a really exciting time here at Morningside is because we had a celebration on June 24th to close the shelter workshop, and we called it Bridge to Community Celebration. And so it was a culmination of a really a five-year plan to, to close the shelter workshop. So of the 120 people in sheltered employment, um, we found spots for most everybody. Hugh Bertelin was one of our first people that got placed out of our shelter workshop program. Hugh approaches an Albertson store. I was hoping I could be like a currency clerk. And then I, I, I finally became a courtesy clerk at Albert Sons. Morningside got it for me. I liked bagging the groceries. I had some friends there who I see uh, our customers. I see my fellow workers. Hugh chats with his coworker. I work Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. How long have you worked there? 19 years. Hugh smiles while standing under the Albertson sign. And there's probably eight people or so um, that didn't make a transition. Of the eight, uh, six people uh, were uh, referred to a community access program, and I think two people decided to retire. Uh, and of the six or so people that we found in other options for, um, all of the parents, all the parents were upset at me. Mark Riccobono from the National Federation of the Blind. Parents of people with disabilities, I think, are the group that this subject is hardest for. I feel bad that we have not gotten to them earlier, that they have fought the notion that this model of, quote, work is really the thing that defines what the future can be like for their child. Well, my mother didn't think I could do it, but I did. Hugh bags groceries. Having somebody sit all day, uh, put together a nut and a bolt, isn't necessarily a positive thing, in my opinion. As a matter of fact, I think oftentimes that had a more detrimental effect on a client than it had a positive effect. Because um, oftentimes those people didn't want to be there, and they knew it wasn't real work, they weren't getting paid for it or paid appropriately for it, and um, it caused a lot of issues. The desert landscape in Gallup, New Mexico. Minimum wage, seven fifty per hour. My name is Texas Smith. I listen to old country music. Dexter browses music. Sometimes I don't go to rodeo. That's all I do. 
It used to be a uh, working on like a, a wood shop, like button janitorial. Dexter walks through a dry yard, downtown Gallup. My name is Yolanda Sandoval-Nez, and I'm a senior advocate with the Native American Disability Law Center. For Navajo especially is that um, families aren't aren't well familiar, or I guess you could say they're not educated to where they can guide the kids to different opportunities. But I, you know, it doesn't mean that they don't love them. Wide shots of the dry New Mexico landscape. I think the families did here the best that they can. I was able to go to these shelter workshops and tell these individuals that you do have rights. You have a right to go and explore. You don't have to stay in a shelter workshop. Dexter's one I worked with. A work. Uh, Walmart, pushing cart, sometimes uh, helping people. I love my job, it's pretty good. With shelter workshops, you're kind of held to a level, I mean, a level where you, they think you can't do very much, but I think when Dexter went out in the community, it gave him that opportunity to explore a lot more than when they were kind of left in the shelter workshop. Dexter smiles as he drives an electric shopping cart through the parking lot. Title, Supported Employment. Cheryl Bates Harris from National Disability Rights Network. Supported Employment has been around for almost 30 years and Supported Employment was a model where you identify an appropriate job and you place the individual on the job and then train them as to how to perform the specific tasks for that job using um, supports that could include a job coach. Teresa watches Dexter as he works at Walmart. <laughs> My name is uh, Teresa Jim. I'm the job coach for Dexter Smith. A uh, job coach means that uh, the individual are working out in the community. I had to coach them to monitor, make sure they do their task. He did a really good job. He's a hard worker person and he constantly you know, keeps himself busy. And he likes to help out customers and his coworkers. I got paid every Thursday. Every Thursday. That's why I got paid. Just put it back in the bank for myself. I got a big account. Jim. When I brought these business leaders together and talked to them about closing their shelter workshop, somebody said, well, you need to have a shelter workshop. And these are people that um, were social workers in the community and uh, people in the medical profession. But you need a shelter workshop. What else are they going to do? Well, I had to really explain to them that everybody can work. Maybe work isn't a program for somebody. And that's fine. Maybe work, well, I think everybody can get a job. There are some people that don't want to work. If they want to work, then our job is to find them a job. Last year, we placed uh, over 200 people in jobs, which is a huge number. Susan. If we want to phase out shelter work, because we don't believe it has a place in our modern economy, then we have to make our modern economy make a place for people with disabilities to work and contribute and, and earn a living the same way as everyone else. Share the full film in your community. Post a screening, bottomdollarsmovie.com.